Hey, Jake L. Happy birthday, honey. I love you, my boyfriend. I'm going to do a special video for you. Me and Raven are going to read you How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I know that we both love Dr. Seuss, and I thought this might be a good story for you to hear. So sit down and enjoy your video. Me and Raven think this one's special for you, honey bunny. Even she is in here, and she's napping, little baby. All right. As you go along, I'll show you the pages. Every new guy who will like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who just lived up north of North Louisville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask me why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps since that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all it may have been a trifle. There's two sizes too small. Too small. But whatever the reason is hard to shoe, he stood on there on Christmas Eve, gazing the blue, staring down at the cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm light and window below their town. For he knew every fool down the road beneath was busy now, hanging a mythical wreath. As they hang their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. And he growled with his wiggly the nervous he drummed. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. But tomorrow I know. All the little girls and boys would wake bright and early. The rest of their toys, and then all the noise and noise, 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 noise. The one thing he hated. All the noise, 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 noise. Then the little young old was sent down to a feast, and there was peace, and now peace, and now peace, 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 peace. He was all too put in the rear of the world's street, which was something the Grinch could stand and noise. Here they are, eating. My favorite part. <laughs> And then it is something he liked the least of all. Every who done who will the tall and small was their first bell Christmas bell. And he stand the hand and those who will start singing and sing and they sing and they sing and sing. And the more the Grinch thought this the Christmas scene, the more he thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why well, fifty three years I put up with it now, I must find that the deep Christmas will come. Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. <laughs> I'm having fun reading this, Jago. You know the Grinch is my favorite. Say, I wonder if Christmas time we could do a Grinch. I wonder if we could do a story about the Prince one of these days, Jago. If you like that idea, let me know in the comments section. Love you. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat as he made a quick Santa Claus out of the coat. And he chuckled and chuckled. <laughs> what a great Grinch you trip. With this coat and this hat, I'll look just like Santa Claus. And now, all I need is rain. If the Grinch looked around, the Grinch was scared. But somebody found the neck. But did that stop the old Grinch? <laughs> no, he said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. And he called his dog Matt. Get some red thread and tie a big one on top of his head. And then he loads some bags with some old empty sack and ram set the plate and hit the old man. And the said, Giddy up! And the sled started down toward the home, but the blue will lay this new thing down. All the windows were dark and quiet, snow filled the air, we were all in the sweet dreams downstairs. When he came to the first of the house, on the door, this was stop number one, the old witch closet, and he climbed into the empty bag in his fist. And he 
slide down the chimney rather quite convinced. But if Sandy could do it, so can so could the goods. He got only once for a moment, he was stuck his head out of the fireplace blue. If we go who's talking all in the room, these stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Friends, look at all those kids have all the friends. And they're gonna know there's more for for Auntie and Uncle who said. Then he slithered and swung and smiled most unpleasantly around the whole room and kicked every friend's popgun, bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, chicken, popcorn, and plum. He stuffed them in bags and the great great nimble, cut all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box, took the whole thing, he took the roof and took the roast beef, he cleaned out the ice box, he turned to the glass, wiped the grinch, he even took the last can of bull hash. And he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now, he grinned, I will stuff up the tree. Grinch grabbed the tree. He started softly and a small sound cool and dark. Turned around fast and saw a small who, little Cindy Lou Who, who is no more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny blue daughter. He thought it better with a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old brick was so smart, so slick. Bye bye bye. He thought I was good. Bye bye, stupid kid. But big Santa Claus light, there's a light on this tree. That means blood. On what side? So it's getting to be cool from the workshop. I do Big stuff there. I'll bring it back here. And this bed pulled the child. Then he patted her and got her green. He sent her to bed. And then when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he climbed up this. Jimmy and stop the cheap up. Then the last thing he took was the log burger, but and the wall he left was all open, but hooks and some wire. And there was a wall left open. Of the old wire on the wall, fire was in it. Then the last thing he took was the hook on that file, and then he went off the chain himself, the old liar, and the wall was left nothing but hooks and some wire. And one piece struck a clue to the open house, which a club that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other room's houses, leaving the one much too small for the other room's mouses. It was quite a past time, all the rooms were in bed, all the rooms were asleep. He packed up his sleigh, he packed it up with the presents or rather the wrappings or tacks or tingles or tremens or trappings. And of course, turning into his legs. Two bells, tingles, and of this. Two, from 3,000 feet up, the old guy of Mount Crumpet, he rolled in his low, he killed a jump, hoo hoo hoo, to the hole, he grinned slightly hard. They'll find out there are no Christmas coming. So just wake up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang up and they do end of the who down and who the walk will cry. Woo hoo hoo. That's the noise. That's the noise I the grins grin that I must hear. So he paused and the grins put his head in here. And he did hear the sound rising from the snow. It started to glow. It started to glow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why does it sound like almost merry? It couldn't be so, but it was. It couldn't be so, but it was a very, very. He stared down at his head. He did pop his eye. Then he shook what he saw and stopped in surprise. 
Debbie Huda, who is known to all the small women, volume present at all. They didn't stop predicting from and it came somehow or other. It just came out the same. And the glimpse with this green seat. Oh, I forgot to show this page in my section. I got that. I love this book. Look, it's like in colors red and green. <laughs> and a glimpse with this green seat, ice cold in the snow, so it's not one type of path that would be slow. It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. You need final three hours to find the soul. Then the green found something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, maybe Christmas doesn't come from the store. Maybe Christmas perhaps needs a little bit more. And what happened then? At the new building, see? The prince's small hut, the piece size, I think, the man's hard to install for toy tight. He went to the mill and grabbed more in life. He brought back their toys and their food and their feast, and he, he himself, the prince, carved the roast penis. Well, Jacob, I hope you like it, my love, my sugar bear. I was actually planning on reading this actually for you for your birthday. And I know you probably love hearing the story. No one can resist the grins. Trust me, I'm a Grinch fanatic, and even I know I love the Grinch. This is the best little something they made. I'll probably forget as soon as I say it, though. <clears throat> I've been working on this for months, actually. You came into my world when I met you those years ago. You shine like a star in my heart. The past has passed, the years I've grown. You seem to impress me, my boy. You have a heart that side of now. Sorry about that part. You have a heart that's big as your soul. I love you, my boyfriend. I love you so much. You're special to me. Yes, you are to me. You're a great guy. You always cheer me up whenever I'm sad or scared. You're always there to help me when I'm feeling low. I love you, as I always do. No matter how far you and I apart, we'll always be boyfriend and girlfriend. I love you, I love you, yes I love you. I love you, Jacob, from the first time we met. Every time I see your face on Skype, you always give me a smile whenever I'm sad or lonely. Oh, I love you, Jacob. I want to hug you and kiss you. I want to send you a thousand love notes. But all I can say is, all I can say is, I love you. Happy, happy birthday to you. I hope you have a great birthday, my love. Happy birthday for your 28th birthday. Happy, happy birthday, my love. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I hope you like that, Jacob. I've been working on that for months, actually. <laughs> Believe me, it took me a lot of work to get it done. <sighs> so, me, Raven, hope you have a very happy birthday. Happy birthday! From Raven, too. Bye bye, sweetie. See you tonight. I know it's Tuesday, so we'll do some nice writing together tonight, okay? Love you.